Expedition Log, Mount Kilcreath. Here I've done my best to transcribe and translate what I know of the Dragon Wall found at Mount Kilcreath. Admittedly, it's not a complete understanding, as I am much more familiar with even Daedric's script than Dovazul, but I do know a bit. My enchantments help greatly, the details of which I may have to write down again at some point, as my previous experiment log is still back in the archives at Kavach. Hit nok fjold mod bein suwo, pork ol polgas nao gol ol, o kopran dre nu kogot. Which, by my understanding, translates roughly to Here lies fjold mod foul air that, unknown, possibly sent, as much on land as his corpse does in soil. Given the context, I can only assume Fjoldmod is a name. Oddly, the air word was highlighted in strange blue stone at the wall. It seemed cold to the touch and was humming gently. I found small samples of Dwemeric Ethereum in my college work before, but this seems different. Ethereum is usually warm. A curious choice by the ancient Norse that built the wall. A curious choice of location as well. Was this highlighting added before or after the statue of Meridia was built? Obviously, the wall and the temple itself are the same age, or roughly so, given the architecture, and since the ancient Nords did not, to my knowledge, worship or even recognize the Daedric princes, I can only assume the statue came later. The same cannot be said for the highlighting. What is it? I have a hypothesis about the strange practice, way, power, whatever it is, known as the voice or the thoom. It's something that my professor touched on briefly back in Coral in our Runes of the Ancient World course. She called it a primitive and obsolete style of rune casting based on Dovazul rather than on Daedric runes. She figured that the Daedra were more powerful than the Aedra from whom the former power presumably came. My hypothesis, which flies in the face of everything she taught us, is that the thoom has more in common with Dwemeric tonal adjustment than modern rune spells. This, of course, still needs more study, and for that I would need to find a way to observe both tonal architecture and someone who could use the voice, like the Greybeards. But it is a thought. A kernel of an idea. What if the voice is dependent on tonality in the same way that Dwemeric tonal adjustments were? Both practices break and reshape reality, so to speak, and so I've heard. I'm wondering if that strange blue highlighting, is it enamel, is it imbued with frost magic, has something to do with either a tone used to produce that word, or simply to indicate that it is a word that can be used for the voice. My mind is whirling with ideas, but none of them make sense. Obviously, I'll have to think on it. Addendum. At the end of a brief yet rather arduous detour into the ruins of Volskiger, just up the hill from the temple at Mount Kilcreath, I was able to observe yet another of these old Admoran rune walls. Note, for the sake of brevity, I use the word Admoran as a stylistic and cultural indicator rather than a demonym, unless otherwise noted. After having studied the wall near the statue of Meridia with my linguistic visor, for want of a better term, engaged, I was able to approach the wall at Volskega with a more complete understanding of the language. Unfortunately, I was interrupted in my reading and only managed to catch one word. Wuld or whirlwind. I also observed something very strange indeed. This single word, like air at the Kilcreath wall, was embossed with that same cold bluish substance. I believe it was also enchanted in some way because when I approached with my visor activated, note to self, I really do need a better name for this thing I put on my face. The word itself seemed to glow and embedded itself into my mind. Not just the linguistic meaning of the word, not just the letters that spell whirlwind, but a deep, visceral understanding of the world concept. Howling winds, feet and heart thundering, diving and rolling through cutting sheets of falling leaves whipped up by a storm. Elation, exhaustion, and something I can only describe as divine trance. After a long and frankly harrowing battle with a creature whose mask I can't seem to stop staring at, I managed to accidentally use this word. It's a bit of a blur, I'm not entirely sure what effects it had, and my canine companion was most unhelpful in that regard. Except that one moment I was standing by the fire and the next I smacked full tilt into a wall as the result of shouting into the wind. It would have been embarrassing, if not for the entirely too sleep-deprived and still reeling state of my mind at the time. 
My current hypothesis is that this unfathomable understanding of the word world is a side effect of approaching one of these walls with my enchantments activated, and subsequently going through an ordeal that in some way mimics the meaning of that word, since the wall at Mount Kilkreath didn't affect me in this way. I doubt very highly that the average man or mer who approached one of these walls would have this happen to them, but further observation and experimentation is required to reach any meaningful conclusions. Thus far, I have not been able to replicate whatever I did at Volskiger. I am not entirely surprised, since I am no master of the voice, and until or unless I manage to do it again, I'm going to consider that brief whirlwind a fluke. For now, suffice to say that my earlier wayward guess that these embossed words can be used in the practice of the voice seems to be holding true. Beyond that, there are still too many questions to be answered, too many experiments to be undertaken, and too many jumbled thoughts to sort out. I would need to devise some tests in order to make sense of my various hypotheses, and there are a lot of variables to consider. For example, did my lack of sleep affect the result? If so, how? Was it my adrenaline rush that caused me to be able to shout, and if so, why? Did this have something to do with the presence of a Daedric being, Barbus, or perhaps that strange creature I fought? I have so many questions, very few ways to test, prove, or disprove them, and I still have the expedition at Sarthal to worry about. Mother of Magnus, this is getting complicated. Which thread should I pull on first? Addendum Part 2 After having given it some thought, hiking all over Skyrim with an intelligent dog is good for that, it turns out, I've reached a few conclusions. 1. While it may be nigh impossible to find an exact match for the substance that the ancient Nords used to emboss their memorial walls, it might be possible to find evidence, even anecdotal, of the ancient Nords or even Atmorans, in the true people of Atmora sense, using some kind of resonance or vocal-based magic for enchanting. If that knowledge is anywhere, it's likely holed up in the College of Winterhold, which I will of course have access to, assuming Archmage Arryn got that letter. Who knows with the couriers these days, but I digress. 2. I doubt very highly that my lack of sleep had anything to do with an enhanced ability to perceive a word in Dover Zul. Generally speaking, lack of sleep makes mental function worse, not better. At any rate, this would be easy enough to test. I simply have to approach a similar wall with my quote-unquote visor on while I'm wide awake. Obviously, there are many other variables to consider, but this would at least rule out sleep as one of them. 3. I don't need to test whether having my enchantments activated on approach had any effect. Nothing happened with the Mount Kilcreath wall when I was transcribing onto paper so I could translate it later, meaning that my quote-unquote visor does interact with these walls in some way. Hypothesis confirmed. 4. The biggest question I have now is why I was able to shout. I have several hypotheses for why this could be, with varying levels of probability and testability. A. The ordeal hypothesis. It could be that the stress of fighting the entity at Volskeg had caused me to call up the willpower necessary to shout, but the fight ended sooner than expected. I could test this by trying to shout again in the midst of a harrowing battle, something I would require better armor in order to endure, and heartily do not look forward to. B. The elation hypothesis. Contrary to the ordeal hypothesis, the opposite might be true instead. Having tried to shout once or twice on the road already and having no success, if it turns out I can't do it well in the midst of a fight, it could have been the extreme relief at still being alive that allowed me to use the voice of Volskiger. I'm calling it the elation hypothesis because while I would still have to be in a heightened state of emotion to activate this ability, should the hypothesis in question be true of course, it would be in a less pressing fight or flight kind of way. This would be very hard to test accurately, but I'm sure it could be done. The easiest way to test A or B would be to somehow use the voice again, observe the situation, and record the results. C. The Dragon Blood Hypothesis By far the least likely of my ideas that I'm willing to entertain, but given that I am in fact an Imperial, a Colovian if one wants to get specific, it is one that holds some weight, however slight. Supposedly, the entire Septum bloodline after Tiber Septum were quote-unquote, of the dragon blood. Now, the Septums have had a multitude of branches over the generations, and while I would be more than hesitant to claim Talos as an ancestor, however distant, it could be that I do have some dragon blood in me. Again, this possibility is very slight, 
and I believe I'd have to find, fight, and kill a dragon in order to test it. Literally. I'm not just using that as a demonstration of how utterly impossible this would be, but barring all other reason, this could be the answer. All that, and I still have to go fight a bloody battle or two to figure out what's what. Mara, preserve me. Alright, um... General Trader, let's pop in here for a spell, shall we? Heh, that would have been funny if it were uh, an alchemy shop or something. Take a good look around. I'm sure you'll find what you're looking for. If not, let me know. I might have it stored away. Yeah. Uh, does he work with you? Can I get you something? Well met. Unlike my brother, I have no dislike of strangers. Met lots of them while I was a Stormcloak. Right. Um, what have you got for sale? Some may call this junk. Me, I call them treasures. An interesting choice of words. Uh, let's see. Do you have anything I might be interested in? Uh, because I have a few things that I've picked up. I'm keeping that. Don't touch that. Um, this, for instance. But I think I'm going to go sell that to the blacksmith. He might know what to do with it better. Um, let's see. I, I've picked up a few things in my travels that I might pass on to you. That, yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm going to keep those boots just in case. I don't really need this. I don't have a use for it. Keeping those. Disenchant them later. Um, my old iron boots and gauntlets. Let's see. Anything else you're interested in? I actually I don't know if I'll ever wear this. Uh no, don't touch the mask. The mask is actually quite um it, it's it's a bit of a curiosity and I'm a, I'm I'm a scholar, you see. I'm going to be studying it. Uh, uh Okay. Well, let's see. There's not a lot here that you would be willing to buy, huh? Well, that's a snazzy looking thing, isn't it? Um, yeah, nothing up my alley there. Let's see... Ooh! Enchanted necklaces, always a... Uh, and robes, always a... Uh, an interesting thing for a Nord to be selling, don't you think? Let alone a storm. You've got spell tomes. Did you know that these were spell tomes? I, I, I assume you did, given that the price so high. Um. But I'm not very interested in uh, in buying more spell tomes. I am, however, interested in in this bread and whatnot. I'm going to be on the road for a while, so you know, you know how it is. You were a Stormcloak, right? I'm sure you know how it is. Uh, nah, 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 nah. Anything else? I don't think so. Steal anything from my shop and you'll regret it. Yep, I'll keep that in mind. I'm I'm not much of a thief. Okay. Yes? Uh oh, sorry, just talking to myself, it's fine. I love these little banners that they put up. It's quite... I don't yes. know if welcoming is the right word, but it's... Well, it's a bit brighter than the usual weather around here for certain. Ah, good morning, Lord. Or is it afternoon? I forgot. Steel's good, but loyalty's better. I'm loyal to Dengear first, and the Empire second. I've... so I've heard. Um... Hmm. Blades, helmets... Pretty much anything to suit your needs. Right, I've got some, uh, I've got some things I picked up. Ooh. Okay, well. Um. Well, that's some fancy work you've got there. I hope you don't mind if I take that off your hands. 
Uh, let's see if I have anything that I can trade for that, because that is excellent work right there. I have a couple of, um... I have a couple of pieces of armor that you might be able to turn into something more... I don't know... suitable. That one's from Cyrodiil. So, uh, do with that what you will. But this... that is good work. That is a prop- that was a proper Dwemer, like, breastplate. Uh, stuck onto, you know, a, a cuirass, but still. Lord, you've really outdone yourself with this one. If I were a shield user, I would be very interested indeed. Well done. Okay. Uh, how about weapons? Uh, nothing I'm really interested in. I'm holding on to that. Um, well, that's all for today. See me at my forge if you need arms or armor. Will do. Will do. With work like that. Dwemer breastplate thing. I'd be hard pressed not to. Okay, let's see if I can. Eh, not really. Can't really do anything there. Uh, I don't want to melt that down on accident. That'd be bad news. Okay. Eh, uh, nothing that I'm really willing to part with. Nothing that I really know what to do with, even. So. Mm. Hello. I think we're done with that for the day. Let's see. Anything else I need to do while I'm in town? It's pretty early. Let's take a take a uh, a quick break. At Dead man's drink. Mm -hmm. Right, so how am I doing on food? I'm uh, I could be doing better on food. It's going to be a long walk back up to the north. Sure bones, handsome man in Falkry. Yeah, I, I think I've told you this once before. I don't know if you remember me, but you're barking up the wrong tree, madam. I uh I don't think I'd be your type. Uh let's see. Last seed harvest and twenty seventh <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, I'm welcome to Dead Man's Drink. Yep, I might need a drink, actually. Take a look. Right. Also, I do believe Harvest Scent has already passed. Okay. Let's see. We've got all sorts of sweets. Interesting. I'll take an apple. Apples are always nice to have. Uh let's see. Beef. I don't think this is really there's not much here that I would take with me, just for the sake of, like, you know, it wouldn't travel very well. You hear any juicy gossip in town? Be sure to share it with me. <laughs> well, here's a bit for you. Nori thinks I'm handsome for some reason. Sorry, talking about you behind your back. At some point, we should hurry and pick on here. Oh, she's not talking to me. Okay. Uh, moving on. Yeah, I don't really... Hello. I don't really go in for women. Alright. Back to Mount Kilgreath we go. 